Just one day after the release of iOS 16.4, Apple returns quickly with the release of iOS 16.5 Beta 1 for registered developers and soon for public beta testers. Along with this iOS release, we also got the first beta for iPadOS 16.5, macOS 13.4, watchOS 9.5, tvOS 16.5, and HomePodOS 16.5. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 16.5 Beta 1. So first off, taking a look at the size of this update, it came in at a large 5.46 gigabytes on my 14 Pro Max. That size is going to be large if you're coming from a public release like 16.4, which I was in this case. It's always large like that. So if we go ahead to our settings to check out the new build number, general about 16.5, we can see that the new build number is 20F5028E. So we do have an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we have a few betas to go before the final as expected. And as far as the modem firmware, that has also been updated to 1.70.00 on my device. And again, that number could be different depending on your device. Okay, so now what's new here in iOS 16.5 beta one? And the first thing I wanna talk about is actually installing this update, because if you go to your settings, general software updates, and then for beta updates right here, if you are somebody who pirated the developer profile and you got it for free without paying, you might not have received this update. I've heard from numerous people that those who had the developer option, like they had the public and the developer option before without paying, they now only have the public beta option. So it seems like Apple is now starting to phase the pirates out of the developer updates. Now, you can still install this with the iOS 16 developer profile, the pirated version of that, but it will likely just disappear after updating and you'll basically have to reinstall the profile every time you want to get a new update. So that is very interesting. And I did also see some people saying they got the developer beta, even though they aren't paying and they also don't have the profile. So it seems to be kind of a mess right now. But again, I would not expect major changes to this section. And in terms of, you know, pirating profiles until iOS 17, I feel like that's when we're going to see the big change where those who are not paying for the developer profile or the developer, you know, betas are not going to get the developer betas no matter what. But we'll talk about that when the time comes. So now, as far as what's new here in 16.5 beta one, of course, I did talk about this multiple times in the past. Do not expect anything major with 16.5, especially after the big 16.4 update just got pushed out yesterday. So that included a ton of new features, and I would expect 16.5 to focus primarily on bug fixes and security updates. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be any new features because we'll probably see a 16.4.1 as well, but just don't expect anything crazy. But I did want to talk about the first thing I found that was new in this update, and that is in the news section. So if you go into the news application, you will see at the bottom we have a new sports tab right there in the middle. So I'm pretty sure this is new. I did not see it on any other device that I own that is on 16.4. So this is its own little section inside of news now, which is pretty cool. And up in the top left, we have all sports. You could actually filter this by whatever sport you want to see. So if I want to see March Madness right there, I can do that and I will see everything just from March Madness and no other sports. And the layout is awesome. I actually prefer this layout over like Bleacher Report or ESPN. I really like the look of this here. You also have a highlight section here, which will show you video highlights of different games. You have the for you section, which will just show you an article that you might be interested in, along with different articles down here under conversation starters. This update also allows you to record your screen by simply asking Siri screen record so you can see it starts the screen recording right up there in the top you could see it recording now it looks a little bugged out the little recording icon is small you also do not get to expand it out by tapping and holding on it like you can in 16.4 in previous versions when you do screen recording just from the control center so if we swipe down on the control center you can also see that it doesn't show that we're screen recording and we still have the option to start a screen recording right there so it looks like this is not you know fully functioning yet it's not fully there yet but this is still a beta one and this is just a new feature that has been added where you can screen record via siri oh and by the way you can stop the screen recording by asking siri as well stop the screen recording 
boom, and it's done. It even says done right there, and it shows the pop-up that it's been saved to Photos. Apple also launched Apple Pay later today, so this does require iOS 16.4 or higher, so it will work on 16.5 as well. However, it's only rolling out to select users in the US right now, but you can see what the UI looks like. It actually looks pretty good. So if you are somebody who likes to kind of extend your purchases and not pay a big lump sum up front, you may be interested in this and the layout looks pretty awesome. So we should see that roll out to everybody in the coming weeks, but for now, it's just for select users in the US. However, we still do not have any sign of Apple Card savings account. So that of course is going to be where you can collect interest on your Apple Cash card right here, which you can see I have a balance, a decent sized balance here. So I've been waiting for this for a while, but I'm assuming because of all the issues with the banks going on right now, that that's probably why we don't have this feature yet. Apple also mentioned today on their developer site that starting on April 25th, every application will be required to be built with Xcode 14.1 or later to ensure compatibility with the latest iOS 16 and other operating systems. Now, going back to iOS 16.4, I did also want to mention that the laggy notification center, the animation is still present here in 16.5. So I know some people had this issue before, and you can see when I swipe up right here that we do have a little bit of a bug with the notification center. So I'm going to swipe down and then swipe up and you can see the little lag right there for the other bubbles coming in. So that is an issue still here on 16.5. Some users had that on 16.4. I didn't have it on my main device, but for whatever reason here on 16.5, I am seeing that lag and that little stutter in the notification center almost every time. Not every time, but almost every time. And taking a look at the release notes for this update, we have one new feature and it's related to the home application. And it says a shared admin in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. And then right below that, we have four known issues that are also related to the home application and that shared admin. Luckily, all four of them do have workarounds though. As far as the performance and battery life goes, everything feels great so far in 16.5 beta 1. Again, it's only been a couple of hours since using the software, so it's really hard to judge it right away. But I will say that the Geekbench 6 scores were higher on both single core and multi core compared to 16.4, which is a great sign. So we got a 2523 on the single core and a 6355 on the multi core. And for battery life, I honestly would not expect a big difference from 16.4. However, if there is any type of difference, either better or worse, I will let you know in my Apple Weekly episode. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.5 beta 2. And I would assume that we are on a two week release schedule right now. So if that's the case, we should see beta 2 of 16.5 right here on April 11th. That would be my guess. Maybe the week of the 10th, if it's not on the 11th itself, it should be that week. Now, there is always a possibility of being on a weekly release schedule. Although it is rare, it is possible to be released next week. However, my guess is going to be on the 11th. And then as far as the final release for iOS 16.5, I would not expect that until sometime in May. I would expect the release of 16.5 in May, which means that we should see 16.4.1 at some point in April. Now, that's not you know, confirmation that's not a guarantee, but I would assume that we will see a 16.4.1 at some point in April to patch up some security vulnerabilities and, you know, patch up some existing issues that users might be facing. And what's crazy is that we're only a few months away from seeing iOS 17. So we should see iOS 17 beta one at the Worldwide Developers Conference, which is usually on the first or second week of June. If I had to guess, it will be on the first week right there on June 5th. However, we still do not have invites for that Worldwide Developers Conference yet. And speaking of that, we should actually see those very soon. We might actually see the invites for WWDC next week. I would expect next week or maybe even the following week to see them, but we should see those invites very soon for the upcoming conference in early June. So that is iOS 16.5 beta one. Again, not really too much going on here. However, if I do find anything new in terms of features or changes, I will let you know in my upcoming Apple Weekly episode. But if you've been following me for a while, you would not really be surprised to see not much changed here in 16.5 beta one, because I've been telling you for the past couple of weeks to not expect much 
with 16.5 in general. And honestly, I would not be surprised to see 16.4 be the final, you know, big update for iOS 16. I think we're still going to see more features and changes. I just don't think we're going to see as big of a update as we did with 16.4. I don't think there's going to be another update with more than 60 new features and changes. Apple's main focus right now is on iOS 17. And I will have a video coming up on iOS 17 pretty soon as well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, of course, as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more iOS update videos just like this one, hopefully more exciting in the future. But anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.